Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on this monumental day for the arts in Nova Scotia. My name is Eric Sandy, and I have the honor of being the chair of the Board of Governors of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. I'd like to start this morning by acknowledging that we are gathered on Mi'kma'ki, the territory of the Mi'kmaq Nation. We honor the peace and friendship treaties, the Mi'kmaq Nation, as well as the land itself. Today we are here to announce the winning team of the International Design Competition for the new Art Gallery of Nova Scotia and the Waterfront Arts District. It's our pleasure to be joined by Andy Fillmore, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, Suzanne Lonas Croft, Minister of Communities, Culture and Heritage, and we also have with us artist Ursula Johnson, Jennifer Angel, the CEO of Develop Nova Scotia, two representatives from the winning team, and our special guests, Rob Sobey. To get started, I would like to introduce <coughs> Nancy Noble. She is the director and CEO of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Thank you, Eric. Good morning, everyone. It certainly is an exciting day for the gallery and for all Nova Scotians. I want to start by thanking our partners in government and the community who have worked tirelessly with the gallery to move this project forward. We are so fortunate that you see the value of what we do every day, as well as reimagine what it means to be a gallery for the people. And to all the shoulders we stand on today, this project has been a long time in the making, as many of you know, and could never have succeeded without the vision and forethought of those board, staff, and community members who pushed to realize this goal. The new Art Gallery of Nova Scotia believes in our vision to be an inclusive public gathering place that connects people with art to inspire new ways of thinking. And it is clear, as you will see, that the winning team embodies the vision, this vision throughout their remarkable conceptual design. With the thoughtful work completed to date, I'm confident that the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, as an anchor to the Waterfront Arts District, will be a national leader in the visual arts. Through this building and a new approach to the delivery of visual arts programming, we hope to set a new standard for art museums in Canada by creating a unique space for people, communities, and art. At the moment, it can be challenging to see a bright future, but I am confident as we move through this difficult time in our history that the value of arts and cult culture will become ever more clear. The project itself will create jobs for Nova Scotians, contribute to the provincial economy, and act as a major attraction for many years to come. But more importantly, it will provide a space for all Nova Scotians and others to gather and celebrate the diversity of our community through art. And it was this sentiment that all three of the finalists in the design competition brought forward in their concepts for a new gallery and arts district. I would like to thank and congratulate all three finalists final teams. All the de designs are remarkable and you made the jury's decision very difficult. Now to talk more about the benefits of this project, I would like to introduce Andy Filmar, our Member of Parliament and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. Andy. Thanks Nancy. Quay, bonjour tout le monde, good morning everyone. It's Wonderful to be with you here today, and thank you for making time for us. Uh, my name is Andy Fillmore. I'm the Member of Parliament here in Halifax, and I have the privilege of being the Parliamentary Secretary to Canada's Minister of Infrastructure and Communities. I'm uh, so pleased. Uh, also joining us this morning are Nova Scotia's Minister of Communities, Cultures, and Heritage, uh, Suzanne Lonas Croft. Uh, you, Nancy, of course, is the CEO of the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, Eric Sandy, the board chair, Jennifer Angel, CEO of Develop Nova Scotia, and everyone else in the room uh, who has worked so hard to get us to the day that we are uh, at today. It's wonderful to be with you here on Mi'kmaq as we celebrate this incredible milestone. You know, as I approached the podium and took off a, a mask that was, uh, uh, had Maude Lewis's art on it, I couldn't help but reflect on what Maude Lewis would think of what we're going to see today and how far art in Nova Scotia has come from the journey of her little house to the big new house that we're going to be building on the downtown waterfront. In times like this, I think it, uh, it may feel like the distant past, but it was only a year and a half ago that we came together in, the, in Gallery One of the existing Art Gallery of Nova Scotia to announce joint funding for a brand new Art Gallery of Nova Scotia on the Halifax waterfront, on the shores of Chibuktuk, the Great Harbor. In the months since, excitement for this project has only grown, and today the long-held dream for the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia comes into focus. The dream of a beacon of culture on the waterfront of our capital city that will guide us into an even brighter future, and a dream of a spectacular new community space 
at which all Nova Scotians, Canadians, and visitors to our fair shores can gather. Cultural infrastructure, like we are celebrating today, is fundamental to the growth and success of our communities, and it's why I'm so pleased that the federal government, through its historic and transformational infrastructure plan, is investing $30 million toward this special project. At the new AGNS, Canadians will experience and express and preserve their cultural heritage. It will include more space for the gallery's permanent collection, giving visitors more access to a greater diversity of artists and larger exhibitions. A state-of-the-art facility to bring artists together with families, neighbors, and friends, and give all of us a chance to celebrate the stories of our land and the talent of our people. An architectural icon that will not only be visually stunning, but will also advance key goals for energy, carbon, climate resilience, and accessibility. And it will do so while creating new jobs and opportunities for Nova Scotians. I must take a moment to recognize the incredible, hard, and thoughtful work of all of the design teams that responded to this call, but in particular to the three teams that submitted breathtaking stage two proposals for our new art gallery. The team of Architecture 49 with Diller Scafidio and Renfro and Hargraves Jones, the team of Dialogue, Acre Architects, Brackish Design Studio, and Shannon Webb Campbell, and the, the team of KPMB Architects with Omar Gandhi Architect, Jordan Bennett Studio, Eldo Lorraine Whitman, Public Work, and TransSolar. I can say that having sat on such juries in the past, I certainly do not envy the task of this jury in making this final decision. Anyone who watched the presentations or studied the drawings of the three finalists felt the magic of all three of these spectacular possibilities. Proposals that put into clear view the possibility that exists not just for our new art gallery, but for our downtown waterfront and for our burgeoning capital city. Importantly, the successful design is conceptual and it will continue to evolve as meaningful consultation and engagement with public continues to shape the final design. As a city planner, I know very well how important public engagement is to the success of any project. So I encourage all Nova Scotians to find and capitalize on all the opportunities that will be made available to engage. And I must say, I commend the project team for ensuring that public engagement was a central principle of this process. I wanna thank everybody who has been part of this journey, including Nancy and Eric and the team at AGNS, Jen and her team at Develop Nova Scotia, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Premier Stephen McNeil, and so many others that we can't possibly name in this short time, including a very special donor that we'll hear from later for their generous gift to their pro this project and for the unfailing constancy of their support to this institution and for Canadian art and artists. Today is an important milestone for this project and for our city there will be a few more milestones on the road ahead, but I know the one that we're all looking forward to most is the grand opening of this iconic cultural gem on our waterfront that will serve our province for generations to come. Well, all, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Today is an exciting day for our province, for the arts and cultural sector, and for the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, and especially for the people of Nova Scotia. Last year, we announced that our art gallery was going to move to a new, modern space on the Halifax waterfront. It was a bold and exciting step with our partners and the Government of Canada. Today is a significant milestone in this exciting project, and I want to congratulate the winning design team on having their design chosen. This new gallery will provide access to art, culture, world-class exhibits, and festivals for all Nova Scotians and visitors to the province for years to come. Arts and culture help tell the story of who we are as Nova Scotians. This new art gallery and public space reflects the importance of art and culture to our lives, to our communities, and to our economy. You'll also hear shortly about a very generous donation to this project. This donor is a great supporter of the arts and all that Nova Scotia has to offer, and I thank them for their significant contribution to the future of the Nova Scotia Art Gallery. I look forward to the day when I and all Nova Scotians will be able to enjoy the new iconic gallery and public space. Thank you for your continued commitment to arts and culture in this province. Thank you to both MP Fillmore and Premier McNeil. Without your ongoing commitment to the people of Nova Scotia, projects like this would not be possible. 
Now it is my great pleasure that I introduce Ursula Johnson, a multidisciplinary Mi'kmaq artist originally from Eskasoni First Nation. Sobe Art recipient in 2017, she is a respected artist here at home, throughout Canada and around the world, and a good friend to the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. I would like to thank her for her commitment to this project and the role she played throughout the design competition. Welcome, Ursula. Bulalio. Grudloi Weldasi Bile Wenjigom, Hel Dasi Gokchid Art Gallery. Well, I don't see Kigmana to all the good digic. El no architecta, art gallery, or Nova Scotia government. I'm a jelta, not hoi el do, chida, em sit Kigmana. A helta, gis det by am coda zero, Dan was going to move, Bugwelk, Amali Dwahan, a pillowy day Dwahan. I'm going to say a glass here. We see my mass, my alleague. Week is where the beaver lives. Week warm is where the people live. The beaver creates their week based on what they need. They teach us about Nedugulimk. Nedugulimk is self sustainability through responsibility. But this term is directly related to, consort, to resource conservation, excuse me, to resource conservation. We often hear this term these days in regards to the harvesting of resources, such as hunting moose or fishing lobster. However, this term, which in all actuality is a philosophy, is much relevant to museums, art galleries, libraries, and archives. If we watch the beaver, we can see that they create an environment based on what they need. They employ all their skills, the skills of being an architect, an engineer, a landscaper, an agriculturist. Beaver changes its environment based on what they, their family, and their community need. They only make the necessary interventions when they feel that their resources and their sustainability is being threatened. However, beaver makes these decisions in a responsible way. We can learn much from beaver just as we can learn from nature. This is an opportunity unlike any other, where we are creating a new home, a new week for the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. We are creating a space that is for all on this great shoreline of Chibuktuk. This is an opportunity for all of us to come together and to show the entire world what our intentions are in creating the week for the Art Gallery, for the community of Nova Scotia where we can work together to share in the conservation of our art, our cultures, and our histories. From the perspective of an artist in today's day, during times of a global pandemic, much civil unrest, where complicated social histories are overlapping with complicated political histories, I can't help but think how we are forced to think about where we stand in regards to looking at our own responsibility in our own homes. How we are forced to look at what we value in opposed to what our values are. At this time, I would like to invite the amazing tech folks to bring up a slide of an image I had sent in earlier. This image is what I consider a work in progress. It's definitely organic. Um, growing and changing in nature, but it is an idea just so far. This was a part of my speech I did for the keynote of the Canadian Museums Association annual Gen general meeting a couple of years ago. I would like to invite you to take out your phone and to take a picture of this image, of this slide. I encourage you to read it, to think of it, to share it, and to add to it. I would also like to encourage all of the architecture teams, the federal government of Canada, the provincial government of Nova Scotia, and the art gallery and all community members to look at what our own responsibility is in order to create our own sustainable environment, a healthy home by looking at what our own relationship is to that environment and those resources. Let's take a note from Beaver's book.
Thank you, Ursula. Very thoughtful words that we'll take to heart as we continue to plan the new art gallery for the waterfront. I would like to introduce one of our key partners on this project. Please welcome Jennifer Angel, President and CEO of Develop Nova Scotia. Good morning. Seeing yourself reflected in the built environment is a very powerful form of validation and belonging, especially when you've lived most of your life not seeing yourself reflected in the world. These are the words of Margot Derling as they unveiled a new piece of public art that celebrates the 2S LGBTQ plus community. This is the power of art and the power of social infrastructure to inspire and to validate. In a time of so much loss and struggle and division, we see an opportunity for large scale reinvention. And the promise of social infrastructure as a stimulus for that change is increasingly well understood. The public spaces, the waterfronts, the sidewalks and the parks and the libraries, and yes, a reimagined art gallery can be magnets to attract people and to bring us together. Research shows that social infrastructure can fight inequality and polarization and that it can catalyze innovation. In communities that have it, social infrastructure, uh, people are more likely to build ties with their neighbors and invest in their communities. And these communities are happier and they're more resilient. At Develop Nova Scotia, our job is, is pretty simple. We build places that people love. To attract people to live here, to visit, to invest and to participate. And the aim is to enhance our quality of life and well-being for everyone and to stimulate inclusive, sustainable economic growth. We're working really hard every day to do a better job building places around the province where all people can see themselves and are inspired to participate. And we have work to do. We believe this reimagined arts district anchored by the new arts ga art gallery of Nova Scotia can be a place for everyone. And we know that to build a place for everyone, we need to build it with everyone, which is easy to say and hard to do. But getting it wrong not only leaves out the chance to build something better, it also has the effect of reinforcing systemic barriers that contribute to social inequity and injustice so the stakes could not be any higher. Innovative projects can inspire and at the same time address challenges like climate change while also building understanding and social cohesion. This is a place and a project of incredible possibility. How we build it matters as much as what we build. The government commitment to this project has created such an important opportunity, and today we celebrate the vision of a generous donor and long-standing community leader. And today we celebrate the vision and creativity of a winning design team and all of the design teams who participated. Perhaps most importantly, today is the beginning of the work to bring Nova Scotians together to build a collective vision of a new place for people and art on the Halifax waterfront. And it's an invitation to all Nova Scotians to join us in making this place for art and community a place where everyone can belong. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And I think we'll, all the partners that are involved in this are gonna take up that challenge to make sure that we engage with community and, and, and build something really accessible for the people. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, I would like to welcome Suzanne Lonescroft, Minister of Communities, Culture and Heritage, to announce the winner of the International Design Competition. Minister, welcome. Thank you. And it's a wonderful day to be here. Um, holding the name of the winner, winning team, and to be representing the province of Nova Scotia to announce the winner of the international design competition. This winning team will work with Nova Scotians to create the new art gallery of Nova Scotia and Waterfront Arts District. 
The recommendation of the winning team was made by a qualified jury of seven professionals, including architects, landscape ar architects, artists, and a museum professional. Nova Scotia had the opportunity to view three finalists, their conceptual designs at the art gallery or online to provide feedback. I was fortunate to see those designs myself. So now, here's what the jury thought about our winners. The jury felt they demonstrated excellence in addressing the critical outline of the design competition brief. The jury said it was the core values of the design team's proposed design, its moving, bold, and thought-provoking sensitivity to people and public space, and its extraordinary ambition, which led to their unanimous recommendation. And the winner of the International Design Competition for the New Art Gallery of Nova Scotia and Waterfront Arts District is KPMB Architects with Omar Gandhi, Architect, Jordan Bennett Studio, Elder Lorraine Whitman, Public Work, and Transolar. This team has a distinct Nova Scotia flavor, as Omar, Jordan, and Elder Lorraine are all Nova Scotia residents. In addition to their national and international partners at KPMB Architects, Public Work, and Transolar. Congratulations to the winning design on their outstanding, outstanding work. And I look forward to see what they will do to shape the future of art here in Nova Scotia. I would like to thank the other two finalists for their hard work, dedication, and vision. Architecture 49 with Dillier Scovidio, Renfrew and Hargrave Jones. Dialogue Acre Architects, Brackish Design Studio, and Shannon Webb Campbell. I would also like to thank our international jury for taking on this challenging task and for their astute decision. Finally, the Art Gallery and the province will work with the winning team and the public to shape the final design, one that is meaningful and reflective of the diversity of Nova Scotia's communities and formal public Public engagement will begin in early 2021. And now, let's take a look at this exciting work. On behalf of Mi'kmaq Nation, I welcome you wherever you may be to the traditional unceded territory of Mi'kmaq of the Ilnu Mi'kmaq people. Deloise Lorraine Whitman, also known as Grandmother White Sea Turtle and President of Native Women Association of Canada. I would like to take a moment to address the unique situation we, as a human race, now find ourselves in COVID-19. But sometimes from crisis comes opportunities. Perhaps Mother Earth has given us a chance to change, to make better versions of ourselves, to start a circle. This is the province uh, and the art gallery of Nova Scotia has given to us this opportunity. We gather today to unite our passion and our design to share with all Nova Scotians 
for Nova Scotians. I express today the pleasure and the enjoyment of working with an incredible team of architects, engineers, designers, and many more professionals. I have been truly blessed to spend the past months with a beautiful group of people from diverse cultures, languages across Turtle Island. This truly makes one humble to be included in the scope of such fashion, Walaliak. I would like to thank the Government of Canada, Minister of Culture, and all the funders who have contributed with this project. I am certain that you will not be disappointed in this robust project, for it is made for the people with the people. There is still lots of work to do, and communities and groups of people to engage, but this is just the beginning of a new beginning, a circle, so to speak, with no beginning and no end, just a world of opportunities. I would like to acknowledge our competitors who have worked hard in their endeavors to pursue their ideas and aspirations for the people of Nova Scotia and the tourists who visit this beautiful province of ours. Thanks to our team, KPM Architects, Omar Gandhi Architect, Public Work, TransSolar, Jordan Bennett, and all the other teams in the background. As being an elder on the team from Mi'kma'ki, I celebrate the diversity found on our team and the diversity of the cultural backgrounds, which is reflected in the diversity of the art gallery. This building is being built from the ground up. This is for all Nova Scotians of every race, color, religion, faith, courage, heritage, gender diverse, disabilities, young and old. This is a place to hear stories, celebrate the artworks as they are displayed in the areas throughout the galleries, a place to embrace local and abroad work of the artisans. This inspirational journey has certainly showed a true vision of the eight point star. The eight point of the star being the non-indigenous people and the unification in which we join together in collaboration. The star is not only a visual symbol, but it is a commitment to work together for a brighter future, for the next generations, for all peoples of Nova Scotia. So as we gather today to celebrate in people, we shall celebrate virtually. MC Nokoma, Mesibuku Walalin, thank you. Thank you to the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, the province of Nova Scotia, developed Nova Scotia and the leadership behind the new gallery. Your vision is a beacon of hope for the art community, province and region as a whole. In spite of COVID-19 and the ten tense events that surround us, you saw this new gallery as not only a new way of thinking about art, but a new way of thinking about the world, a catalyst. We found each other and accepted your challenge. We never looked back. To our peers, the dedication that went into these submissions is nothing short of amazing. It was an honor to present alongside you. Our team is made up of mentors and apprentices. We're a diverse group composed of multi-generational, multicultural leaders in our respective fields. We were guided by love and a common belief that architecture can change the world. If not for the restrictions caused by COVID-19, both Bruce Kobara and Shirley B Bloomberg Founding principles of KPMB Architects and lead architects for our team would be speaking instead of me. I'd like to personally thank these two, my mentors and Canada's great visionaries for allowing us to be a part of this incredible journey. Before a pencil touch paper, we met with a small group of Mi'kmaq elders, one of whom was the matriarch of our team, Elder Lorraine Whitman, a tireless advocate for Indigenous women in Canada. This project would not have been possible without Lorraine, and I'm forever grateful to have crossed paths with her. The road was meandering and oftentimes difficult, but an undeniable force led us to a destination none of us could have envisioned or ever thought possible. Our work is the product of a beautiful collaboration and a genuine resolve. Thank you to the brilliant Jordan Bennett for not only his knowledge and creative spirit, but his pivotal role as a central designer of our architectural proposal. Thank you to Mark Ryan and Ben Matthews of Public Work, Thomas Batozzi of TransSolar, and Heather Hansen of PR Hive for their brilliance and tireless commitment. 
all of us felt the weight of knowing that we were a part of something very special. And to my own team, specifically Jordan Rice and Christy McDonald, for pushing this project in the limitations of our little studio near Pier 21. In addition to our core team, we employed the skills of craftspeople spanning the maritime provinces. From North Preston, Nova Scotia to Charlottetown, PEI. From New Minus to the north end of Halifax. Thank you to my dear friend and mentor, Chad Jamieson, for producing the, this incredible model, now archived by the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, and to Tyler Simmons for making magic through moving pictures. The Art Gallery of Nova Scotia challenged us to think differently about the art gallery design, to change the model of art galleries from bastions to collect and pre present art to a haven for art and people, a gathering space, a community living room, the AGNS invited us to create an artistic expression inspired by the land, the culture and wisdom of the keepers of this place. In the early days of this competition, our team declared an approach to the design of this building as from the ground up, our commitment to acknowledging the first people of these lands. All building systems and elements within our design are integrated and interwoven, playing off and harmonizing with each other. We are creating a new model an art gallery of our time and for the future, a unique identity for the AGNS by providing many scales, engaging in contemplative spaces to provide inclusive, immersive experiences on this amazing waterfront site. By thinking about the people in the land first, we have developed a design concept that represents intense collaboration and the interweaving of thinking and making. This design is a reflection of our respect for the Mi'kmaq people and our desire to uphold, honor, and celebrate their culture. We were able to meet with a small group of elders and leaders from the Mi'kmaq community throughout the design process, and there will be many more meetings with all Nova Scotians from all communities to come. The design in our proposal may come across as complete, but it isn't. It's a starting point. It needs your input in order to become an art gallery that is welcoming to all a place shaped by Nova Scotians for Nova Scotians. Thank you. Thank you, Omar and Lorraine, and congratulations to both of you and the whole KPMB-led team. I know they're out there watching. Um, as the minister mentioned, your team demonstrated excellence in addressing the criteria outlined in the design brief, and your sensitivity to the place and people was just outstanding. I think I speak for everyone when I say that we are exceptionally proud and inspired to collaborate with your team and engage Nova Scotians to reimagine the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. Now we have one more item to celebrate today. I would like to introduce Rob Sobey, trustee of the Donald R. Sobey Foundation and the Sobey Foundation. Donald Sobey, Rob Sobey, and the entire Sobey family have been long-term supporters of the gallery. Their generosity to the arts in Canada is unparalleled, and we are so fortunate to have Rob with us today. Rob, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nancy. Hello, everyone. So many uh, smiling faces. At least I think you're smiling. On behalf of the Sobey family, I'm honored to be with you here today to congratulate Omar Gandhi, Bruce Kuivara, Shirley Bloomberg, Jordan Bennett, Elder Lorraine Whitman, and the entire winning team for their visionary work. I want to acknowledge Premier McNeil and the government of Nova Scotia for the leadership demonstrated for the future of cultural infrastructure in our beautiful home province. This Nova Scotian-led, all-Canadian team has presented an extraordinary gallery design which will truly enable our province to stand even taller amongst the leading cultural destinations of the world. This vision represents a global platform for Atlanta Canadian culture and the artists whose work already makes us very proud, including Ursula Johnson, the very first Atlanta Canadian winner of the Sobey Art Award. Great to be here with you today, Ursula. On behalf of the Sobey family, I'm very pleased to announce our support of the gallery's fundraising campaign, which will equip its new building with a sustainable funding model and the ability to offer a world-leading visitor experience for generations to come. Led by the Donald R. Sobey uh, Foundation in conjunction with the Sobey Foundation, we are committing $10 million to help this project achieve its global potential. Support for Canadian art is a value that the Sobeys learned from a grandfather, Frank H. Sobey, and one that we take very seriously. This gallery has the potential to be a center point for communities to share and grow from the vision 
that artists create through their work. Our sincere thanks go out to everyone who's contributed to today's announcement. Thank you all so very much. Take care and stay safe. That's just wonderful. Thank you so much, Rob, for those kind remarks and our sincerest gratitude to you, the Sobe family, the Donald R. Sobe Foundation, and the Sobe Foundation for this transformational gift. I believe this is the largest single gift we've seen at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. And we are so fortunate to have your support as we revolutionize the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia into a leading art museum across Canada. This gift will play a major part in the realization of this project and will help create meaningful space for artists in the region and around the globe. Well, everyone, that concludes today's event. So congratulations once again to our winners, KPMB Architects, Omar Gandhi Architect, Jordan Bennett Studio, Elder Lorraine Whitman, Public Work, and TransSolar. We look forward to working with all of you, and thank you once again to the Donald R. Sobey Foundation and the Sobey Foundation. As I said, this is a monumental day for all Nova Scotians. To stay up to date on the project, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter at, at, no, at Art Gallery NS. So thank you everyone for joining us this morning in this momentous day, and have a super day. Thank you.